Okay, folks. Yeah, so again, um, welcome to the artist talk today, Memorias in Arte, with the artist Gavi, the Bronfer, and Gloria Zapata. And um, it's delightful um, and wonderful to see you guys and um, talking about the artwork that you did for this show. And I would say, Gavi, um, let's start with you uh, talking about how you got in contact with Gloria and um, what you know let you do or what inspired you to do uh, pick that photo as we learned she gave every artist photos um, and um, didn't tell you who it is or you all knew it was Honduras I guess you knew that <laughs> yes. so let you she she basically drop boxed the folder and she asked me to pick an image which any image which stood out to me and the image I, I chose was of the school, La Escuela in Honduras. The reason why I chose that photo was because of the work that I do within my community. I work in the school system. I work for non-for-profits. Mm -hmm. um, so it really stood out. That photograph stood out to me. And the way I decided to depict it was to create basically a bridge of New York City culture and Honduras. But that was why I chose the photo. Well, I saw this map um, also on your art piece, and th there is the Brooklyn Bridge, right? Do I see the Brooklyn Bridge there? Is that it's the? Like, it is the Brooklyn Bridge. Any bridge. It could be the George Washington, the Brooklyn. Okay. So, yeah. And for for me, not not speaking Spanish, what is the text? What does this text say? So the text says, "La llave para la libertad está en la educación, la cultura, y en la investigación." Well, that translates to the key to freedom is in education, the culture, and the investigation. So that's the translation to that. That's dope. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, right on. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Really like also this that you made two pieces out of one photo, kind of. You have this, you know, the map and and the school, it's um, just very different approach from other artists that we show, saw who uh, in a way took the photo and put it in their style and um, you still can see the photo and I think you pretty much didn't um, make something out of it. I mean, with your own uh, impact, that is just, um, it was great to see. And I, um, the Bronx, yeah, uh, I think uh, so that I said the, the coming to abstraction. I think the Bronx has done the, the most abstraction out of his photo, you know, that you made the the pet <laughs> stone kicker or <laughs> the stuff. But, yeah, I mean it was it was fun. I enjoyed it. like I I immediately when I saw the image um that Gloria pretty much uh, handed towards me was I saw it as being something pop is because like I'm from the Dominican Republic. And so like that scene or that photograph that Gloria had, um, it was kind of relevant towards my past kind of, because a lot of, of my family members, we like to go to like to the rivers. The rivers are way different than here than they are like in the Dominican Republic, but like the rivers are fun. They're clean, they're gray, they're open. It's just like to watch somebody walk over rocks is pretty is adventures, but you kind of already know where they're heading to. They're either heading to have a good day and just enjoy it or not. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I'm I'm influenced by a lot of like sci-fi and like uh, animation and like illustrations and stuff like that, depending on like how abstract I want to get. But uh, I'm, I always loved like mechanics and robots and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was really interesting what you made out of her her photo, basically. Yeah. Gloria, I, I have seen a lot of photos on the website of your artworks. Um, is there a particular one that is close to your heart you want to talk about uh, in connection to that show? Or I don't know. You pick uh, I mean, they're all basically, uh, you know, close to my heart. Uh, but, you know, specifically um, my abuela, she's not with me anymore. So she passed away about five years ago now of cancer. Mm -hmm. So yeah, to um, to basically see myself grow and be able to collaborate with talented artists and be able to show these images and then share my personal, um, I guess, how I grew up, you know, that I'm 
not just from the Bronx, but I'm also from Honduras. It, it's, it's a lot for me. And then sharing that part as well, because, you know, she's someone that motivated me to continue. Not, not only that, I'm named after her and stuff. So I, I um, you know, I miss her a lot. So to not be able to share this with her is a lot for me. But I, you know, she's with me in spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, very good. So mm -hmm. Oh, great. Oh, um, oh I, let's see. I wasn't ready to ask questions because I didn't hear everybody talk yet. Right. We talked about the, the general situation that artists are in right now before we just kind of uh, went to the specifics. But yes. Yesterday, we, it was always interesting to ask the artist also, Gavi, where, where, um, where, from where do you come as an artist? You know, what uh, did you draw what? as a ch yeah, what started what you? started what, you yeah, basically? You being know? an artist. Yeah. Um. So when I was in high school, I didn't have the opportunity to take art classes. I took one drawing course when I was in my junior year, and I really enjoyed it. But my first year of college, I went into nursing. I I did my undergrad, and my I did my associates with nursing, and then I transferred over to Lehman, and I walked across the ceramic art like the ceramic studios and I, I was like I want to try it let me let me try that and I fell in love with it after the first semester which was three four years ago and I haven't stopped since that's intense yeah. <laughs> yeah so you know I did that and then I am now teaching art virtually throughout the week during this quarantine and I'm using this this is my my footwork in the community. I, I'm able to engage with the youth, engage with the elderly, and and have people express themselves in different forms. And this is something that I, I didn't even imagine I'll be doing in high school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Great. And uh, the Bronxer? Uh, so where I come from in my background, I guess. Um, I mean, first off, I guess my whole, I guess, family that's over, they're all from Dominican Republic, literally. I, I don't think there's not one person that came from that island that lives here in New York. And um, none of them were like really into art, which is kind of different for me. And it was different for my family to kind of see like one of their kids and one of their family members just ride off into a creative path where everybody else is doing like business and, you know, nursing or something. And um, I, I like art because it was all around me already. So like, you know, like the casual, the typical graffiti on the wall. But then it's like, when I saw what murals were and what, what design looked like while I was going through school, like high school and college, then it kind of like solidified of what I really wanted to be. Um, and I just kept on doing it ever since. Pretty much like Gabby, like it's like you like it, and you just keep on going because you don't want to stop, and you like that you're creating something with no rules, and nobody's out here stopping you or slapping you on the wrist or something. But I think it's really, I think that's what made me do what I'm doing now, and like help me collaborate with Gloria, like you know what I mean. Um, so, you, did you study art in college? Yeah, I did. Uh, so it was called mixed media. So I did uh, photography and graphic design. Uh -huh. And then I did a year at Cooper Union in 14th Street. Oh, well, Ast well Astor Place. But mm -hmm. and um, after and then my father, um, he gave me his first camera. It was a film camera from the 1980s. And then from there, I learned how to do film at the point in Hunts Point. Um, and that was pretty dope. I mean, I just kept on taking these creative paths one by one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, wonderful. That's interesting. So you're still doing street murals and things Oh, like actually, I'm going to start doing street murals. Oh. Because, I mean, I, I've, I've done fine arts and, like, actual drawing and, and hyper-realistic paintings and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I want to push my, I guess, my robot, you know, sci-fi thing into full effect outside instead of just on canvas all the time. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, I, I'm pretty sure Gabby wants to make humongous sculptures the size of buildings if she wanted to. <laughs> if she had, if she had enough clay to 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 add on. I definitely would. If there was enough clay see, in the world, right? I think be huge. <laughs> that'd be humongous, and that'll be pretty cool. Like, because I feel like once you're outside, it's different. Like you, you, you think a little bit different. You're not constrained in a box or in an 11 by 16 or whatever size that Michaels likes to give you. <laughs> so. Robot versus buildings. I see it. <laughs> I see it. Like robots, and then like Gabby's building. Oh like, yes. Yo, I'm out. just here catching the picture. I'm just yeah. catching the picture. <laughs> so, and Gabriel, you started as a photographer, or what was your way into the arts? For me? Yeah. Um, for me, well, I studied multimedia. So I studied in multimedia and BNCC, and I wanted to do photography uh, and filmmaking. So I really was into the filmmaking part. And... Um, after that, well, I definitely didn't, it didn't happen with the filming because the equipment is very expensive. Um, so I give it to Alex that he has the equipment and everything. Uh, so as I, I moved on, I went back into photography and honestly, I didn't want to do so much um, people and it was more nature for me. But as I continue, it developed for me to like capturing mural artists and art and then editing them and using, that's when my media came in and started, you know, editing my images and figuring out other things that I can do with my photographs. And also now, you know, when painting, because you study all this in art, it's just really what you want to pick in the field. Mm -hmm. um, and now it's like, you know, going back to painting, but still doing my photography. So yeah, definitely, definitely had a whole different change from starting with multimedia studying into going back into photography. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. That was dope. Did you do something with your own photos, Gloria, or did you just give them to your artist fellows? Well, they all had the original, meaning the original um, color, like they wasn't edited. So mm -hmm. the way they edited in the in the site was afterwards. So they all get the original um, for them to basically pick how they want to, you know, recreate it. When, if they were painting it, if they were doing sculpture or however, and then I would do my own thing. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Super. Mm. So, um, else? Yeah. Next questions. Well, I could ask Gabby. Uh, are you just most primarily working in ceramics or uh, a lot of different media? I actually haven't seen the show yet, which I was, <laughs> you know, so I know. Uh, don't know. But she didn't, I mean, she also did a two-dimensional piece for that show. But had uh -huh. you planned to bring a sculpture in Bronx Art Space too? Uh, a ceramic? I, I, didn't, I didn't hear the, the beginning. It um, I, I, I just, I know that um, you did a two-dimensional piece for Memoria Senate. Yes. Had you planned to put um, a ceramic piece in the show too? Yes, I was planning to put it on putting all three. Okay. Uh -huh. And th they are the pieces that we see on the website, right? Is that true? These? Yes. Long? Okay. Okay. Interesting. Super. So it's, it's ceramic is your primary media, right? Because it's not, it's, I mean, it's not easy. You? Your ceramics are your primary media? that you work in or I mean yeah. I was just thinking of yeah. you saying you wanted to go big and I know that is super challenging with ceramics. She hear you. Could you actually hear me? <laughs> I can't hear you. No kidding. Isn't you said ceramics. I'm sorry Linda you said ceramics is her uh, a primary media. I, I guess I really have to talk loud. Okay. So, so yeah, um, ceramics is my primary medium. I've been working with clay for three years. I do some photography. I do sketching. I do oil paintings. But primarily, I enjoy working with ceramics. Mm -hmm. 
It's, it's interesting because, you know, I, for myself, I've worked in a whole lot of different media, but I know that some times or some eras, the ideas just come in one particular media more, more than others. Could you hear me? Could you? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I was saying that I thought working large in ceramics is super challenging. Um, you were talking about wanting to do something big like uh, Bronx was, right? <laughs> so, yeah, so, you know, when, when from talking to, to my friends, talking to my family, talking to, to my friends in the art community, um, I had this idea of me portraying, you know, I had the idea and I, I would do little sketches and small models. Gloria is a witness to this. Um, and they would always tell me, no, like what you're trying to say, you cannot convey at this scale, at this scale. So I was really afraid when I went so big, but I think the message that I, that, that I was trying to convey hit home when I went and I did these structures at a human scale and gave it a certain presence. And it, it was definitely a scary experience. And every day, like I had the idea, but as the idea developed, as the days went on, you know, every, anything can change during the firing process. It can all shatter and break and, yes. you know, who knows? But I, I, I enjoy working with ceramics and I like the, that variable of the unknown. You, you, you don't know what's gonna happen or how it's gonna look like after it comes out of the fire. And I think that's one of the exciting parts. That's, that's the exciting aspect to it for me. Yes, interesting. That's dope. I mean, Linda, like seeing her do the, the work, I'm telling you, if you see these buildings in person, you'll be like, wow, you know, it's like so much detail to look at them. And then the book itself, how it's a smaller version, and you're like, okay, you know, how did you go from this to this? And then a portion of me, of course, you know, it's, a, it's, it's me, but it's a, it's a, it has a story of itself. Each and every piece has a story of itself. Mm -hmm. Right. And I guess we see part, I guess we see a piece behind you, Gabby. Is that true? Yeah, this is, this is one. So do you have a, do you have a studio? Mm -hmm to do these I things? Do not, I do not have a studio at the moment. I was working at Lehman College Studio, mm -hmm. but my time there is up and because of quarantine, most of my work is still there. So ah. I, I, can, I don't have access to the studio. Boy. Okay. Yes. Wow. Yes. Mm. Tough. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. Tough. Yeah. With clay, you really need a water source, you can't just work anywhere, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Also yep. to fire it, no? Oh, and to fire it. That's, right. you know. Yep. There, are I, cities, <laughs> there are places in the city that do that work, but I haven't done ceramics in New York City. So I don't, I don't know, I can't recommend, but I have friends that have worked in these places. So, could she hear me? I forgot to talk yeah. loud. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good, good. Super. Um, super interesting. Yeah. yeah. Just we already chatted so much before. <laughs> before Gloria got here. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. You know, it's like, yeah. Okay. yeah. No, I mean, we were, we were talking about um, how much this the situation around us is influencing, you know, um, the art, yeah, artist uh, work, you know, and medium or, to, you know, also the topic or, you know, what, what this time has, has for you guys, you know, to, um, yeah. what to work on and, or, I mean, there are some artists who really put, push the reset button too, as we heard from yeah. Andre yesterday and really, yeah kind of start over <laughs> yeah i think like i'm glad like we have we were able to do this beforehand like you know just um everything you know when it comes to gabby's work like that takes time it takes months actually you know so that was you know at least to have an image of it it's it's amazing but it's it's even better to see it in person and then you know to have the paintings ready 
you know, you have to really have all the artwork. You have to have a moment to like just be yourself, be able to create it, be able to be creative. And then during this quarantine, like Andre said, to do the reset button, it's like you really rethinking everything that you do now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and just the opportunities, you know, that um, I, earlier this um, two months, like me and Gabby was working with John um, Ahern and we was doing, you know, when she did the plaster of me, it was like, it was a, a fun, adventurous moment. You know, so it's just to have those experiences and then now being quarantined is like, are we going to get those opportunities again? Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I yeah. saw that you were in this exhibition at the Poe House in the park there and not that yeah. you were the, the so I think more and more institutions are also putting on virtual shows. Right. So um, there's at least some. Um, I mean, the exposure to your artwork. I, I thought that was also um, interesting to look at, this, um, the place. The New York Parks is that, right? In, at the Poe House, Gloria, yeah. where your pieces yeah. were also shown, right? Virtual. Yeah, it's, no, it's on virtual, yeah, through the New York, New York City Park. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, right. Did you uh, have a favorite? Pardon? Did you have a favorite? No, it was, I didn't stay too long. I just looked at your pieces. <laughs> <laughs> the <As> image. You <laughs> <should>. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> just, just, you know, one they, of the images. They were <laughs> gripping. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> very, very well done. So, uh, yeah, really, awesome, good. I mean, yeah, I mean, all of us as artists, we're all trying our best to, you know, basically continue to support the community and show the community, you know, our artwork, you know, mm -hmm. um, and working with Alex and working with Gabby is just, you know, like I said, is, it's more than just working together is really putting artwork out there that can be shown to our community, not just now, but in the future as well. Mm -hmm. You know, right. right. Because, yeah. So do, yeah. do you have uh, Gabby or, um, Bronxa, do you have, um, shows ahead or plans that that just got postponed but will come <laughs> i mean life or just got postponed <laughs> <laughs> but um, Every, everything got uh, postponed right everything got po even the word postponed got postponed um <laughs> but i i i mean i was i had to put or set aside certain projects that i thought would be you know beneficial for me mm -hmm. like for example like there's a lot of artists that aren't making a lot of money and um or if they weren't making a lot of money to begin with it's even worse now because they can't they it, it, i think it's almost a disrespect now to sell anything that hasn't that doesn't have you know the the critical like i guess barrier of what was happening now like if you can't if i wanted to post something or like or sell something that is fun to me and it just promotes happiness i don't think is even like appropriate to even sell at this point or even try to make money. Even if I have to pay rent, for example, mm -hmm. I don't, I will still have to kind of rethink that idea of the product if I want to resell it again, like for, for myself, because a lot of people won't take it as a, a beneficial thing. Mm -hmm. Like I, if, I, if I'm not making either face mask, um, a Black Lives Matter shirt or even, giving out free food or something I, I don't think i'll be considered relevant anymore until this um gets fixed and revitalized as a community um i i know a lot of artists that are trying to just you know keep their head above the water financially but they can't because of what's happening now that like you have covid you have all these protests you have these curfews literally while gloria was talking i heard the cops outside literally initiating the curfew like everyone in their homes type of thing and it, it's crazy how we're just i mean we're actually having this conversation but we're literally in it we're in the eye of the storm of what's happening right now so yeah i mean it's it's changing a lot of people's mindsets i i feel i mean for the better and the worse but it's it's something that was gonna i feel it was gonna happen eventually Mm -hmm. We don't know when. I mean, we we were we were stuck with two with two problems, which is the protest and the whole COVID nineteen situation. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you how do you how do you get out of a, a a wall and a hard place 
and an immovable object all at the same time. Like you have to I be like, pick and choose, right? You got to balance. Yeah, them out. you have to you have to pick and choose, like, because the thing is, like, every single I guess every single action that you take towards yourself, your friends, your family is very detrimental to your future. Is detrimental to your day to day, your living. It's just it's really hard. I, I feel it's really hard to kind of like put everything all in a few words, but it is something that it, it, it does exercise your mind really thoroughly instead of something that's subtle like it used to be where if you're an artist or a creative at best is like, what do you do now? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, how do you, how do you, how do you promote positivity in such a dark, dark place? <laughs> nice. You know? Yeah. But I mean, that's what's been moving me for a while now, I guess. <laughs> thing that I heard today on National Public Radio, you know, uh, was that seventy their next latest poll, seventy percent of the American public thinks the police use too much force. And oh. mm -hmm. that yeah. I mean, but the world is changing somewhat, you know. Yeah. I have lived long enough to have had to watch um you know both nixon and reagan get elected on the law and order you know yes. yeah and which and and uh, well anyway and they, even trump has now a uh, a, a 55 percent disapproval rating so i mean as you should Big. <laughs> we're working on it we're working uh, on it I mean, you know there's still an awful lot of idiots out there but this yeah. is, i mean i like <laughs> i have to listen to this but i want to know where you live that you actually are hearing the police come around and start the curfew the That's hood now i'm gonna stop um i live in the bronx and we saw them last night you know it was just full uh, in my haven. Of police cars yeah. everywhere. Yeah, helicopter. I mean, blocking the street. Did you hear that, Linda? And um, yeah, it was, they were all over the place. I was it like, was what is going on? Yeah. It was on 136 and Central. Yeah. I'm only a block away from it. Right. You are. Right. Really? Yeah. Okay. We have, I'm going to get ready with my camera, but then I realized uh, it's not a good idea. I mean, yeah. and that's another thing, like, yeah. everybody's going back on their word. Like, it's very, like, uh, it's like as if we were given a gift and they want it back. <laughs> so it's like, none of your rights really matter anymore. <laughs> and it's like, they're like, no, nah, we're lying. You can't do anything about it. Whether, you know, it's the land of the free, the home of the brave. And then it's like, the brave aren't free anymore. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, oh, yeah. And it kind of... Yeah. It kind of sucks that we're kind of like trying to find so many words between the lines that aren't there anymore. And it kind of sucks. You know, everybody's trying to do a crash course of being a lawyer, but they can't. <laughs> because all lawyers are trying to do pro bono and save everybody's lives and their own, but they can't. It's kind of weird, you know? It's, yeah. I mean, I mean I was, hopefully it should I fix. Was, I was speaking to Alex and, and stuff, um, and I was telling him that I find it interesting how some of the work that we collaborated in or just with other artists as well, or um, Gabby has some symbolic symbols on her, on her buildings that also, you know, captures of things that's going on now. Like our mentality was never at seeing it to happen the way it is in the present now. It was just a moment of speaking through the art. Mm -hmm. Right. I th yeah, I totally agree with that. I mean, well, that's what that's why I like that there are creators and artists in the world, and the fact that that's happening over and over again, and just creating, a, a, I guess, a strong circle of people that that have the talent and the skill set to take what's happening around them and create something that's physical, so people could understand what they see throughout their day to day is pretty impressive. Um, as for example, we're literally making a whole exhibition off of the memories of, of one, one human being's mind, which is Gloria's, but we're still dissecting it and recreating it into our own path. And I'm pretty sure that a lot of the work 
that you're gonna see on this show is even is being divided. I mean, it's not being divided, but it's being portrayed in somebody else's eyes, especially yeah. now. Like all this stuff is happening, but it is also being recreated in, into something that is now and not before anymore. So her pre her her past memories are not the present future. If that makes sense. Right. I feel that. Yeah. Thank you. I feel that. Yeah. Not only that, you know, it's also everybody's trying to um, capture the community right now, you know, trying to yeah. speak community, either through art or through social media, one way or another, you know, so it's like mm -hmm. to get a lot of artists now to come together, you know, it all depends where everyone's mindset is at, as Alex was saying, like balancing it out, like, what do I do, you know, do I, do I get involved, do I not get involved? You know, so it's like, mm -hmm. how, how do you speak out and, you know, do, do it in a way that you're, you're going to capture the community? Exactly. I mean, we have people like, you know, the Bronx Art Space helping people out. We have you talking to the Bronx Art Space to help <laughs> us out as creatives. Because usually creatives are just anti-social introverts, which is a good <laughs> percentage of them. <laughs> which is funny, but it's a funny dark joke, but it's true, like... There's a lot of artists that want to be heard, but they can't because of just them as them right. being a person. And there's nothing bad about that. It's pretty cool to know that in times like this, you can stay into yourself and hold yourself on as your own anchor. But they right. also need that push to be shown because a lot of artists that aren't shown have way bigger voices than the people that actually speak. <laughs> so I have, a, we... I have a question. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. I'm sure, hopefully, yeah, we come back. But how would you actually get involved in another group show? I mean, yeah, I, that's the whole thing. Like, so my, me as a, as the Bronxer, quote unquote, I mean, I made that so I could give other creatives, whether it be poets, chefs, cooks, um, illustrators, photographers, whatever, whatever platform that involves creativity, I want to give them a professional platform. Because there's a lot of people that are really good with art, but horrible at presentation. Mm -hmm. And if you can't present yourself properly, people are not going to show, people are not going to, I guess, give that much of attention as if I were, I guess, uh, Takashi Murakami or something like that, or, you know, the, the, the good old, uh, whatever high-end fine arts artist there is in the world. Because a lot of people be like, oh, I have a great idea, but then, like, they don't have the people to talk to. They only have, what, like 10 other people or 10 other friends that are probably not even interested in art to begin with. So how do you push somebody's talent to a broader range of people that don't know anything about art? I right. mean, like you, have, like you have galleries like, like you guys, you have artists that enjoy seeing other artists. I like helping people. I feel like people should be helped all the time, whether as much without money as possible. So when the, the time with money comes, they're ready. They know how to take money. They know how to how to sign and read contracts and stuff like that and not get pretty much annihilated by the corporate world because we don't want that. <laughs> right. Really, yeah. Right now, times are going to be super hard. So I don't know, like that whole money, we're trying to keep it, but it's really, it's really hard, you know, if you're not working together, you know, yeah, exactly. in our own separate box, it's not, it's not going to help us out. Mm -hmm. That's true. I feel that. Um, but you know everybody has their own um how do you say opinions of it and really trying to figure out where they're gonna go from here mm -hmm. yeah. i think so too okay i think we lost gabby yeah i think so gabby you there did she try to so. sign back on? i didn't see her send her a text <laughs> yeah. we can revive her. somebody else any oh hi everybody oh there's a few people here if y'all have any questions feel free to ask questions right yeah Abby, um lisa how you doing and shanti if you have any questions feel free hola you know um linda yeah <laughs> yeah any yeah. questions Oh, me asking more questions? No, I kind of did it already. I thought somebody <laughs> was asking me a question. Yeah, okay. No, no. All right, the other folks are not ready well, to... Well, I, I just would, would say, I mean, what when um, 
Bronx has said, you know, with, with what, shall, what art shall I do? And it should have a mask or be political or whatever. But yeah. also art, I think, could have a function of healing too. And yeah. I saw um, yesterday we, we had BG here. And um, and I saw that he did a he told us that he was painting you know in the night was painting right. this wall and I saw this wall and it is just um, this wall he painted is is just um, a beautiful I mean he He's took back. this wall and and I have this, I, I, back again <laughs> I have terrible connection where I where I am I apologize no uh, no problem. Um, so I saw what, what BJ did and, and I thought what this painting that he put on this wall is, is a beautiful gate and um, it, is, it is just beautiful. It doesn't, it's, I think it's just to heal, to really uh, these, these good vibrations that you, you said, well, can, we, can you produce something that is positive? I think you should go on, you know, because it will be needed. And I looked at this wall and thought, yeah, that's um, this neighborhood, wherever it is, I don't know where exactly, but um, um, it is just delightful. It's just right. to, to go, I think, to walk by there every day and see, it, see that um, without any political um, or, or anger or Black Lives Matter impact. Um, it was, I think this is also a chance for art to to heal because right. that's i think the society has to do a lot of healing when that is kind of i don't talk about the i don't talk about the politics that are over they shouldn't be over at all i just talk about the covid now you know when that's yeah. over you know the other i ideas. mean yeah people you know act like it's over but it's really not you know it's still it's still out there but i do agree i think there's going to be you know once everyone gets a chance to step out again, there'll be like more murals to see and that'll be even more great to see it in the community, you know, as just uh, artists being able to speak to them through their art and then seeing it, you know, themselves. Because I feel sometimes just walking by, as you, as you mentioned, and seeing a piece of artwork, it tells you so much and, you know, makes you feel good. It, you know, it gives, gives you different feelings depending what art piece you're looking at. Yeah, or, the, yeah. or buying an art piece from you, you know, like one that is behind you, you know, that I can see. You know, people have, I think people don't want to be reminded of that COVID crisis with art for very long. I right. see that as something that is, I wouldn't say on vogue, but in a way it's, you know, in fashion right now. Um, but I think in the long run, um, your art um it doesn't have to have that the face mask or you know it doesn't have to have that in in order to be sellable because i think people will will buy art um that doesn't remind them of that time that's, that's true I, I feel like it's funny because you could you could like you don't like you were saying you don't have to have a face mask on your art pieces so, so <laughs> people know that you went through that era i feel like if you're alive later on in the few years people would just know automatically that you survived through that era you know what i mean so it, it's it's i feel like we're like in a double renaissance where everybody's trying to rebuild themselves but right now people are literally building themselves up every other day because of everything that's happening all at once everything is happening at the same just, time yeah. some people still stuck in a shock you know yeah, yeah. yeah. i Very mean much. art is going to be different art is going to be super different um People's mindset is going to be super different. Um, at the, like, for example, only last year, I felt like the Bronx in general was going through this like flux of just like uh, going against gentrification and trying to be their own people and try to be your own boss and stuff like that. And then to be brought down back again by, you know, by a, a virus. And then all of a sudden you have to still be inside and take three steps back. It sucks. And then on top of that, you want to throw in the whole, like, the whole murder of George Floyd and how that kind of, like, make us, made us take another 10 steps back. Right. So, like, what, what do you do after that? Like, how do you, how do you rebuttal yourself from, so, I guess, over-occurring trauma? Like, 
we thought we were okay because, you know, we went through the whole quarantining and social distancing. But all of a sudden, now we have to literally be together and reset all the rules that we were pretty much, you know, implemented on doing. Like, you have to do this. You have to do that. You can't be next to each other. But now we have to be physically next to each other in order to, to fight what we're fighting for, like, now and yesterday and the day before yesterday. So, like, how do – what do you – I feel like – we are creating this art for who? For us or for the, for the future people that see this? Or are we upset because we never created this much art ever, but now it's not really going to be seen as much as we've, we would have saw it when we were technically free to roam the world? Mm-hmm. Right. I, I mean, I, I feel you. I feel sometimes people, well, not people, but, you know, maybe artists or just in general, in order to speak up, sometimes things have to be happening for people to say things. Sometimes people want to speak out, but they feel it's not the right time. When is the right time? So right about now, mm-hmm. you know, they keep saying it's the right time. I don't know. Everyone has their own opinion on the right time. Uh, so it's, it's a sensitive topic. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely a sensitive topic of really of everyone taking charge and control on what's going on. Um, Gabby, I asked earlier um, to Alex, I was saying if you would uh, be in another group show. Of course. Definitely. <laughs> I think I think this, this Memoria Senante, the way you, you build these relationships with all these artists and, and you're able to bring everyone together, I think it, it would be awesome to see more of this. I feel I mean, that too. Would you like like it to be a, a different artist with paintings, or would you like to be like artists of uh, doing sculptures, uh, and ceramics? I'm all for it. You know, I'm all for it. The paintings, photography, the sculptures. I'm all for it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. As you should. Okay. You know, get, get, get more people in, into it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For sure. That's cool. Okay. I think um, good last words for this artist talk, and I'm sure um, you will produce more and more wonderful artwork. Uh, there's enough to think about and um, to create. And I wish all of you all the best. And um, yeah, stay healthy and well. <laughs> and um, was a pleasure to have you for this artist talk today. Thank you so much cool. for your. Um, thank you, everyone that joined. Thank you for being part of Memoria del Arte. Thank you, guys. <laughs> thank you all. Great. Have a good evening. Thank you, Bronx Art Space. Bye, Linda. Yeah, Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.